going on YouTube um, we got a load here out of Gulfport Mississippi going to Bund back to Bundridge Alabama to Walmart it's a load of bananas I gotta go to the port I'm gonna have to have an escort but here's another story when I come here this is this hotel is where we came where we stayed when we came down here to work with the CBs. I used to in the military I used to do construction and uh, in the army we kind of do uh, for the most part we do kind of crude construction like uh, uh, I wouldn't say crude but we just put up like basic buildings and uh, you know enough to you know to have command centers and all that they're not really top of the line we're it's not like a, a office or something uh, it's not gonna have like AC ran through it or any any stuff like that right we just do crude it's just a building with electricity but the army sent us out here to Gulfport which is the home of the CBs which is kind of like uh, the construction of the Navy right and, but they're way they're well, they're well more trained than the army guys so we came down here and learned how to do HVAC with the CBs. See, in the CBs, in the CBs, from what I was, uh, was told, they learn everything. Their one guy learns all the, the trades, right? So he'll learn boilers, HVAC, uh, framing, uh, cinder block, plumbing, electricity. In the army, it's kind of ass backwards. We have one guy and he does one thing. So you have one plumber, one electric, one uh, electrician, one carpenter. Each you have that one set skill. So in the Navy, it's kind of cool that that one person learns multiple skills, and we learn one skill. One, or, or one guy learns one skill. So they sent us over here to learn how to do HVAC. I don't know why we never used it, but it was free training for us. So we learned how to do HVAC. Uh, yeah. And this is my experience of Gulfport. And also my brother was, there's an Air Force base here. It's, there's a lot of military here. So here in Gulfport, Biloxi, which is, they're kind of connected. They got the Air Force in Biloxi and then you got the Navy here in, um, in uh, Gulfport. But this is my experience of uh, Gulfport. Home of the CBs. The guys that when you want when you want real construction done, you call the CBs. If you want fast construction done, you probably you call the army. You know what I'm saying? When we do more quantity, they do more quality, I would say. But the army was trying to transition to like being kind of like the Navy. Because when I went to Africa, when I went to Africa, all the construction missions were done by CBs, right? And then my rotation was the first rotation of engineers from the army to go to Africa and see if the army could do what the CBs were doing. Um, so, that we were, but that was our iteration of our, us. We were kind of like the test group to see if the army can take this role and uh, what people don't know is different services have different uh, deployment lengths. So I know, and I, well, I don't know from what I heard and what my brothers told me in the Air Force, like a on ground, not a ship or anything like that, on ground deployment is, I think he said six to nine months or something like that, right? And in the Navy, I heard the same. Uh, same thing because they they do have Navy pe personnel that is on the ground right so six to nine months but in the Army and the Marines from what I know from the Army and the Marines we could range from minimum to nine nine months that's minimum to 18 months the longest I've heard was I think 18 months so we kind of uh, we kind of do more we do longer rotations and we do more um, 
longer and we do them more frequently, right? Because when I joined in 07, the battalion that I was in, nine months before I got there, no, they was on deployment when I got there. They was at the end of the deployment. We were, I was at the cusp of uh, if I was gonna be sent over there or not because they were that close to the end and they decided no you're by the time you get processed and get there you only be in in country a month and it's kind of not no point in sending you right so but my battalion the 92nd out of Fort Stewart those guys were going on deployment every nine months and it would be nine months on nine months off nine months on nine months off we had guys we had an E7, that guy was deployed in his career, I think it was nine times. That is ridiculous. Nine, nine times he went overseas. And it's, and it's no, uh, it's not rare to catch people six or, you know, six or more deployments. It's not rare. So, yeah, I just kind of rambled right there. Right, a little story time and explain how the army operates. But we're getting close to the port. You know, there's a crane up there. Y'all probably don't see it. Let me see, that's the shit I hate right now. Let me get in front of the big truck. That's how, that's what they were doing. Well, I tried to, I went to the port to see if I can, uh, what I have to do. And they gave me a number. I have to come get escorted onto, onto, well, I tried to kind of figure, I never already knew, but I didn't have the information. Well, here's the escort lot. So, uh, the port is closed right now till one o'clock. So they're not gonna take us in there till one. And then, um, See how long it takes us to get loaded. Hopefully, I can get some good footage in, inside the port. Uh, last, uh, maybe like two weeks ago, my friend De Desmond he he went in there, and he's he's an older guy and he <laughs> doesn't know how to operate phones, so he can tell me how to just come straight here. So I just went to the port and they told me how to get here. But waiting on the one o'clock, see where we can go get loaded. Right now I'm waiting on uh, my food. I ordered some curry chicken, so see how that tastes. Hopefully it doesn't give me the BGs.
Heidi? What's that? Oh yeah, yeah, they got me up. Woke me up real quick. A little bit, <laughs> a little smaller. Good to go? Oh. Yep, follow oh. her in and out. All right, thank you. This is the thing I love about trucking. Every day you see something new, you experience something new. Look at where, right on the ocean. It's like we're on a little island surrounded by water. That's it's like an island. That is badass. Man, where is this dog at? was here you would just
it is there? I don't need to turn it on right now? Uh, no, just open your doors. Just open the doors? Okay, so.
why the fuck he did all that shit. I don't know why that guy did that, like, I don't know why he just didn't turn around like I did. Backing into these doors, it's already pretty tight, as y'all seen. And look at this guy right here. They got him back in between two trucks, and there's Jersey barriers out front right now. And then these guys moving so slow, it's like you could tell this, tell him to move before he started backing. Been in the yard jock. Hey, the crazy thing is, the yard jockey gonna come and try to. He was honking, so I, I stopped because he was honking, right? Uh, he kept honking, the guy in front of me, he was pulling out. And I was trying to back up, the guy was honking, so I stopped. Then he come and tell me, hey, how about you pull in there? I was like, I was gonna do that, but this guy's pulling up. You know what I mean? I wanna be pulled in front of him and then he hit me. But then, I tell the yard jockey, man, you you honking, you being in a rush ain't fucking helping nobody. You need to, I told him, hey, you need to calm down, man. You honking, he pulling up, I'm trying to bag up, you you honking, so I think I, I need to stop. He making it worse. Then he come trying to apologize, like, oh, my bad. Nah, bro. 
Stop being in a rush. Stop being so impatient, man. People, everybody's in a rush. I gotta go too. But I ain't finna sit here. Look, I wanted that guy in that red truck to hurry up and back up. But I ain't finna sit here and, and rush him and be honking at him. So that's ridiculous, man. People need to relax. See, look at it. He over there cutting people off again. See? Crazy. In a rush for no reason. We got the red light, so they're finna get us loaded. It's for sure a load of bananas. Temperature is 57, so we'll get it uh, loaded and go and get out of here. People driving crazy, man. Thing, thing is, you're not gonna, you're not gonna just talk to me like. I don't care if you work here, man. Shit, we all gotta do our job without hitting anything. So I might get mad if somebody taking forever to back up, but shit, I'd rather him back up and not hit nothing and take forever than rush and then take off my hood or somebody else's hood. But look at my boy got the American flag on it. That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go get me one shoot.
sorry to all my Alabama watchers. I don't mean nothing by it. to Walmart we were just here last week nothing special I there's <laughs> a little line out there oh man some long, oh, about four or five trucks out there Ooh. hopefully it's not gonna be that long This, but this this place always gets a long line. I just hope all these guys ain't hauling produce or anything like that. So we'll see. Now look, guys. I was told here to be here at midnight. I get here, my appointment is not till 4.15. This is ridiculous. Two people told me my appointment was at midnight. Remember, <laughs> I've been saying that the last two videos, man, these brokers have been doing this right here, man. They tell you, hey, you gotta be here this time. I get there, my appointment ain't till this time. And here's a perfect example of it. Now, luckily, I know where to park, but there's some bull. There's some bull. This is some four fifth, three fifteen. Come on, man. Straight. I guess I'll see y'all at three fifteen. Three hours later. Well, second time's a charm. Hopefully there's no big line, people waiting.
So you sit here, wait, uh, go inside, and they'll assign your door when it's when they're ready. I don't know what's going on today, man. I guess, <laughs> I don't know what these drivers is doing today, man. They driving ridiculous. Oh, your bananas. See, they want to keep them pretty green for they. Smells like bananas, that's for sure. What's up with these drivers today? They act real special. After getting unloaded, it was, uh, my appointment was, we got there about 3.30, and I leave till 4.30, and uh, got here at, uh, there was no, you know, there's no parking around Bundridge, so I got here to Ozark at the Loves, I forgot this was down here, I was going to head to Dothan and probably get a room, but then I, I seen the love, so I pulled in, and luckily I had this nice spot right here. And uh, yeah, that was the end of this uh, banana load to Walmart. Like I've said in the previous videos, man, these brokers, I don't know what, he told me midnight, paperwork said midnight, I get to Walmart, it's 4.15, so. I think this is the second time that's happened to me at that specific Walmart, so. I don't know. Maybe it's a thing for them to get their product there on a timely manner or something. But if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And uh, please watch another video if you enjoyed. I really appreciate the motivation, all the good comments I get. Have a, I've had one hateful comment, but that doesn't bother me. Uh, what I enjoy more uh, is the good comments, the people that really do like my video video so yeah today is super bowl sunday i didn't even know so i have satellite in my truck i'm gonna try to uh connect it i haven't i don't i rarely watch tv 
but hopefully I'm facing the right direction and I can get a signal. Maybe I can watch the Super Bowl today. So, all right, I'll catch y'all on the next one.